So you can see here, top 10, oh, it's not top 10, top library tools you've never heard of. Now, I've made an assumption there. I, I hope you have truly never heard of the three tools that I'm going to go over in the next 50 minutes or so. Browsing, a wonderful tool for browsing the library's journal collections. Uh, Libkey Nomad, very nice tool for finding the full text of journal articles in particular. And this is super helpful when you are off campus, as many of us or most of us are these days. Uh, so I want to make sure you, you can get access to full text. This is a, an extension for Chrome. Uh, very easy to install, very easy to use. And I hope you've not heard of it before because now you have and you'll be able to use it. The last one is something called Press Reader. This is a bit of fun. This is a database essentially it gives you access to over 7,500 newspapers, magazines, etc. Great for keeping up with academic stuff, but equally very good for some leisure reading as well. Just noticed I'm not actually on the first frame. There we go. Um, so I am going to pause in certain moments to give you a chance to do some hands-on if you are at a computer or most of these things also work with an app, but I'm not going to spend too long doing that because there's quite a lot of you and you know, I'm not going to be able to help you individually if you have trouble getting set up. So while you're certainly welcome to follow along with the live demos that I'll be doing, if you have, if you need technical help later on, just contact me later because I'm not going to be able to help you during the session. Okay. Okay. Let's dive in to, oh, you know what? I'm very bad at this online um, teaching because I forgot to introduce myself. There's my name. <laughs> Most important thing, Chris Chan. Hello. Nice to meet you if I've not met you before. Uh, I'm an information services librarian here at HKBU Library, uh, and uh, I'll provide my contact information later if you do want to ask me any questions about these tools. And one of my opening remarks is, you know, the library just has so many resources, tools, um, subscriptions at, you know, the library website. There's just so much stuff on it. So it's not surprising, really, that many students you can go through four years at HKBU and not realize and not get access to all of these wonderful things that we do have. So I did want to hit these highlights. Let's dive into the first one, which is Rousey. Hello, Joey. Thanks for turning on your video. I really appreciate that. Wow, it's a, I'm interacting with a person. Fantastic. Ah, you, made, you made my day because, you know, it's hard being alone in my office all day. So I feel like I'm just talking to Joey now. Joey? <laughs> This is Browsing. Not kidding. Talking to everyone, of course. What is Browsing? Now, the library has tens of thousands of journals, but it's often hard to search them, to unearth their content, and it can be really hard to keep up to date with them. And so the whole idea behind Browsing is to make journal browsing simpler and more effective. So it lets you do a few things. So I'm going to go through some of the key features, and this is how I'm going to approach each of these three tools. I'm going to go through the key features briefly in the presentation, and then I'm going to switch to a live demo to show you how it actually works. So with browsing, now obviously we have tens of thousands of journals, but depending on your discipline, depending on your major, you're not going to be interested in all of them, right? So as a biology student, you want to know about biology journals. As a social scientist or a you know, sociologist, you want to know about the sociology journals. So you can build your bookshelf. You can kind of customize your particular journals that you're interested in. So you can build your bookshelf and you do that with your free browsing account. I'll show you how to set that up. And you can save journals and get alerts when new issues of that journal are published. Uh, you can also read uh, directly in the app. And by the way, it is an app. Uh, because I actually tried to get my iPad working with the Zoom sharing, but I failed. I think something to do with the Wi-Fi network here. So when I do the demo, it will be with the desktop version. Uh, but there are apps for browsing, so both iPad and iPhone, Google, uh, not Google, Android as well. And you can download the browsing app to your favorite device. You can read there, you can share there, you can uh, send it to your favorite reference manager, for example, Mendeley. I'll show you a bit of that. Uh, really helps streamline your reading workflow. And, and I know there's a variety of uh, 
different students here, but if you're, a start, if you're an undergraduate starting to think about your honors project, if you're a year three student and if you're doing your honors project next year, a tool like Browsine can really help with a big project like that where you're bringing together lots of references. So let's get started. Uh, again, feel free to follow along with me, but again, I'm not going to be able to sort of stop and help you with individual problems just because there are, there are so many of us here, 83 now, my goodness, and I do want to keep the session ticking along. So first thing is how to get to browsing. Like I was saying before, just so much stuff on the library website. We do our best to organize it, uh, but you know, we can't highlight everything. If we put everything on the home page, it would just be a, a massive just wall of links. And to an extent, it is a bit like that. So browsing, you'll find it under uh, collections, actually under collections. Uh, so if you're following along with me, it's under the collections drop down menu. And we've categorized it under databases and journals. And you've probably seen it there. It's the third link under databases and journal journals browsing. So this will send you off to the browsing library. It's just loading up now. Uh, there it is. Now, even if you're off campus, you should still see the access provided by HKBU library because we have set it up that way. Now, the first thing you'll need to do, well, you don't actually have to do it, but I highly, highly recommend that you do it to access all the good features is to create an account. Now, I'm already logged in with my account. I'm going to log out of that just to show you uh, what it will look like. Oh gosh, I forgot it would do that. If this, if you see this screen too, you shouldn't if you followed the right link. Uh, but if you do see the screen, you just need to choose Hong Kong Baptist University and then you should see this. Now, if you don't have an account, what you'll need to do is go to the little gear icon. So the gear icon up in the top right and then go to log into Browsine. So log into Browsine here, Browsine account and then you'll get to this screen. Now, if this confuses people sometimes because they think, oh, my HKBU SSO ID will work. I'm afraid this is one of those cases where it's a separate system. So you do need to, down here, you can see sign up for a separate browsing account. And I'll just open that quickly. And it's very simple, just email, choose the password, agree to the privacy policy, very standard sort of thing. I'm not gonna do that, of course, because I already have an account. Uh, so I'm just going to sign in with my credentials. And once you're logged in, this will allow you to save things and also to export to places like Mendeley, which I'll demonstrate in a second. Let me see, what do I want to demonstrate first? Oops, didn't mean to click there. So browsing, you'll be able to search our journal collection, right? So very famous journal which you science majors will have heard of is nature. So here, I just want to do a quick demo of how it works. So you can find nature there. And you can quickly, and you can see in this kind of more elegant browser interface, you can, as the name implies, browsing, you can browse the contents of uh, the nature journal. Like so. And if you want to actually, uh, click into one of the articles, you can do that. And it will find the article in our collection and send you to the full text. Now, if I'm on campus right now, I'm not outside the library, this is a fake background, but I am in my office. So it didn't ask me to log in or anything. If you're on campus, you'll need to log in this time with your HKBU SSO ID in order to get access to our subscription. So that's in a nutshell, the quick, um, how to get to journal content. But if I go back, whoops, I didn't need to go back that far. If I go back to the browsing library, it's not just journal titles that you can search by. So if you look here, journal by title, even by subject. So even if you're not exactly sure uh, which journal you're looking for, you know, you're just interested in a particular subject. You can browse the subjects down here. So they're divided up into categories or you can type a subject in because there are some sort of uh, sub subjects, if that makes sense. So like psychology. So I've searched for psychology here and in your results list, they're kind of marked. So the red 
kind of filing cabinet icon that indicates it's a subject. Uh, the blue book, that means it's a journal. So if I click on psychology general slash interdisciplinary, this allows me to browse and you can see it's much, I don't want to say it's better than one search, but it's nicer in one search because it just shows you the covers of all the different uh, general interdisciplinary psychology journals that we have access to. So this is a nicer way I find to browse our journal content. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you, going back to my browsing library, I'm just going to do that same search again. If I scroll all the way down. So there are, I do want to highlight this, there are some journals and they tend to be at the bottom. Uh, see journals available outside of browsing. So there are some journals that don't work with browsing because the publisher has not worked with the browsing vendor. You'll still discover them here, but when you click on them, instead of being taken to the browsing interface, it will take you out into OneSearch. And I found that sometimes it does this, the search failed due to a system error. Just click search again and it will work, I hope. There it is. And then you can access that journal, but just via one search in the normal way. As you can see, most journals do work with browsing and you can access them there. Now, before the whole point of, now all of that that I just showed you, you can do that without a browsing account. So why, why did I want you to sign up for this browsing account? The answer is on your bookshelf. So you can set up your own bookshelf I've just clicked on the, the My Bookshelf icon up here. And here's where you can organize the journals that you've saved. And you can see, you can rename it, I don't know, you know, My Favorite Journals or whatever. You can see here, My Favorite Journals are all about libraries. So Journal of Library Administration, Journal of Academic Librarianship. I've put some on my demo bookshelf here as well. So how do you get journals on to your bookshelf. Very simple. Let me go back to the library. Keep searching for psychology because it's a good search. And let me just find any one here. Let's look at ooh, psychology and marketing. Uh, for you uh, BBA students out there, marketing students. So if you want to add something to your bookshelf, here's the entry for uh, the journal. And it's just as simple as add to my bookshelf. And then the publication is added to your bookshelf. So now when I go back to my bookshelf, it will, it by default, it puts it on your, your favorite one here. There it is, psychology and marketing. Now, if you want to move it around, you can do that. In the web interface, it's a bit clumsy because, you know, I can't kind of drag things around with my finger like I could on an iPad, but it's, it's okay. So you just click move here and then I can choose where I want to move it. So I'm going to move it to my demo bookshelf and just click there and it will be moved to the demo bookshelf. On the iPad, it's better. You can sort of drag it around, uh, but it works. Last feature I wanted to show you, which I mentioned is exporting to Mendeley. So you might use a reference manager, or at least I hope all of you are using a reference manager for your citations and bibliographies, right? When you cite things in your essays and you need to do uh, a bibliography at the end, software like Mendeley can really help. So if you found an article that you want to use in one of your assignments, uh, you can really easily export to your Mendeley library and, and other libraries too, if you're using different software. So if, say for example, here's an article, uh, do gender identities of femininity and masculinity affect the intention to buy ethical products? Interesting question, I, I'm, I'm interested. Uh, so here, the little scholar's hat, export citation. By the way, the other options are PDF, link to articles, save to articles, but export citation. And then you get the different options. So Zotero, BibText, RefWorks, EndNote. Uh, at HKBU, uh, we support Mendeley as a reference manager. If you don't know about Mendeley, ask me later after the session. We're not covering Mendeley today. Uh, so I just click there. And because I'm already, by the way, I'm already logged into Mendeley in this browser. So it just came up with successfully saved to Mendeley. So if I pop over to my Mendeley library, I can click on recently added and you can see there the citation to the article has appeared in my Mendeley library. Do note, it doesn't bring across the PDF. So if you wanna save the PDF in Mendeley as well, you will need to download it from here 
and then upload it to Mendeley. It's not, unfortunately, not that clever, uh, but still pretty convenient in at least getting the information into your Mendeley library. Okay, just looking at the time, I've already talked for 20 minutes about browsing. It's just that fun. Is I, have I covered everything? I think so. Let me pause there for a second and ask, are there any questions about browsing? Oh, sorry, Joey, you asked a question a long time ago. Yes, the workshop will be recorded. Yes, Joey, but don't worry, your video is not being recorded. So you might know already, um, Zoom recordings, they only record the uh, screen and also whoever's speaking. So as long as you don't speak, uh, your video will not be recorded. Do you wanna speak, Joey? No, I'm kidding, don't worry. Any questions about browsing? The other reason, Joey, I like people to turn on the videos is I know that they're there. So I know, Joey, you're there. These other people, they might all have left for all I know. They might just put their phone down, walked away. Okay, I, I assume you guys are all here. Sorry, I'm, I'm suspicious, that's terrible. Uh, so I assume there are no questions. Nope, oh, Yifeng is here. Thank you uh, for confirming you don't have any questions. Brilliant. Let's move on then. So that was Browsing. The next one is actually from the same company as Browsing, and it's, it's related, but it serves a slightly different purpose, Libki Nomad. And I think this one will be particularly useful in the current circumstances that we find ourselves in, where we're basically working from home because, you know, we don't want to come into campus and, and congregate. Uh, so that means you're off campus. And if you didn't know this, and, may, and a lot of students don't know this, if you're on campus and you search in Google and you find something in Google, if it's a journal article that the library subscribes to, you get access to the full text because Google Scholar and the journal, they can detect, oh, this is coming from HKBU. So yes, you have access to the full text. If you're at home, the Google Scholar and other systems cannot tell that you are an HKBU student. So they might say, no, you don't have access to the full text. So unless you know, oh, I have to go through the library website, I have to do the searching in the library tools, you might come across things and you think, oh, I, we don't have access to this. So this extension makes things a lot easier. Uh, so it is a Chrome extension. And I'm sorry, Firefox and Safari users. I assume nobody's using Internet Explorer anymore. I hope not. If you're using Internet Explorer, stop, because even Microsoft has given up on Internet Explorer. Uh, LibKey Nomad's only available for Chrome. And I did actually ask the company, well, will, will, you, will you, do you have any plans for Firefox or Safari? And they said, they're very honest, they said no, <laughs> because uh, you know, I think the, the figure is something like 60 or 70% of the market is Chrome. So at the moment, uh, and for the foreseeable future, LibKey Nomad's only available for Chrome. So to install it, you just got to uh, go to the Chrome Web Store. Maybe I'll, I'll do that right now. Hang on. Chrome Store. Here it is. And you just need to search for it. And it's got a very obvious name. I think just LibKey, you'll probably find it. But yeah, LibKey Nomad comes up straight away. Obviously, I, I already have it installed, but if you don't have it installed, all you have to do is click on install. Uh, let's close that, go back. And it's a very simple setup. So in terms of setting up, all you need to do is choose HKBU as your library. Uh, so you, uh, when you first install LibKey Nomad, you'll see the screen and you can just choose uh, HKBU and that's it, you're all set up. So what happens is once you have the extension installed, you're gonna see full text access options even when you're searching non-library search tools. So this is PubMed. Again, if you're a, a science student, you probably know, well, you hopefully know about this database. Not a library database, it's, it's provided by the US National Library of Medicine and it's free. So the library doesn't have to subscribe to it. Uh, but if you're searching from home and you have in Chrome and you have this installed, it will start popping up with these icons. And I'll show you some live demos in a second later too. So you can see here, if we have the PDF, it'll pop up with this icon where you can just download the PDF. Or if we don't have direct access, it'll give you some access options as well. Uh, and this is particularly useful 
if, and I'm not trying, I'm not going to get into the details because it's very confusing. Sometimes we don't subscribe directly to a journal. Like we don't have, in this case, we don't have a subscription to the Journal of Business and Finance Librarianship, but we might get the full text from a different database. And if you've just Googled it and you just find this one, it'll actually say, oh, you know, you don't have access to it. But now if you have Libkey Nomad installed in the bottom left, this icon will pop up and it'll say, hey, article link, HKBU actually has access to this. And you can click on it, sign in with your SSO ID and get access to the full text. And it even is useful in Wikipedia. Now, of course, your professors are telling you don't cite Wikipedia in your assignments. And of course you should not do that, but Wikipedia can be very useful for finding sources, right? Uh, so uh, once you have this extension installed, if you go to Wikipedia and you go to the reference list of Wikipedia, it will show you uh, very clearly that you can download the PDFs or otherwise link to the articles in the library collection to get access to the scholarly sources that the Wikipedia article has cited. So let me show you some of this live. So I want to give you an example here. Copy the link URL. Uh, let's do it in a new tab. So here's an example that I prepared earlier. So it's an example of uh, a journal where we don't have a direct subscription. So if you discovered this through say Google Scholar, you would come to it and you'd say, oh, get access and you click there and it says, oh, check access. And you wouldn't find it if you click check access. Oh, I've got to pay 15 US dollars. That's crazy. Don't, don't spend money on articles. You can always get it through the library. Uh, so you kind of hit a roadblock here, but because I have the extension installed, ah, it tells me article link, Hong Kong Baptist University. There's a click here, will take me, uh, libkey, you can see it's processing it, and it will take me to the full text in the library subscription. So again, I don't want to get into the details of why this is, it's quite complicated, but essentially we have access to it through a different way. So not through the APA official subscription, but through a different, what we call in the, in the business, an aggregator through ProQuest. So here you can say actually HKBU does have access to the full PDF, full text. I just have to spend a little bit of extra time finding it. And there it is. Great. Now I do want to be very honest. Sometimes I'm too honest. Joey probably realizes this. Sorry, I keep mentioning Joey because she's the only person I can see. I hope you're not embarrassed. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work quite as smoothly as we would want. So here's another example. So here's the, it's the actual one I took a screenshot of. Information literacy and the evolving MBA degree. So same, same thing, get access. And you know, I don't have access. Well, even more expensive, 44 US dollars to get the PDF. That's nuts. Never, never pay the money. So, oh good, article link. And I click there. Sometimes, again, for technical reasons, it just doesn't work properly. So you'll see here, it will eventually resolve, but it'll say this, oh, no results were found. We were unable to find an exact match, blah, 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 blah. If you get to this screen, uh, we do have the full text. It's just that there are so many systems. There's the LibKey system, there's the EBSCO system, there's a the library system, and somehow, somewhere along the line, the uh, message got garbled. So if this happens, what you should do is just search directly for it in one search. If you get to something like this, it means we do have it. It's just not resolving properly. Uh, so I'm going to go straight to one search and just do a search for the article title. And you can see there it does pop up. I can click on online access and I will eventually get to the full text. So my message there is essentially, if this LibKey Nomad article link pops up, that means we do have it. It might not work perfectly every time, so just do a search in one search, or if, it, if you really get lost, come and ask me, and I will point you in the direction of the full text. So you can see here, we do have the PDF full text of that article. So please, if you haven't done so already, because it's very quick to do, uh, go to the Chrome store, install that extension, and uh, it really helps in making sure you're always conveniently accessing full text that we are entitled to. Super.
any questions about libkey nomad uh no questions so far oh sorry this is from 10 minutes ago any new questions i'll, I'll pause for a second there i'll take a drink it's very important to stay hydrated i'm seeing no questions Can someone type no questions just just so <laughs> so I know I'm I'm still on the line? All right, <laughs> thanks. I know that Lai Kung is is definitely they've said nope a few times. Great. I've noticed everyone is very clearly putting in their student number and CCL, which is excellent. That really helps my colleagues when they have to compile your attendance. So thank you for that. All right, if there are no questions, let's move on to the last one. I save the, well, not the best to last. Those, those tools are very, very good, especially for your academic work, and especially for getting the full text of things. Uh, but I guess press reader is the most fun, I guess, because it's newspapers and magazines, a bit of leisure reading. I know it's come down to the, getting down to the very busy part of the semester where you're working on your final assignments and whatnot, but it's important to de-stress now and then. So Press Reader, as I mentioned at the top, gives access to 7,500 newspapers and magazines from around the world. It's probably more than that now. I, I wrote this slide some time ago and they're always adding new titles. Uh, just a quick poll actually. I, I kind of want to make use of the equipment that they provided us to. I want to see if anyone's used Press Reader already. Uh, I should have prepared this in advance, but it shouldn't take too long to set up. Because I'm kind of interested. Title for this poll, Press Reader. Uh, I'm going to make an anonymous poll because, you know, I want, I want to know. Uh, have you used Press Reader before? I kind of want to know. So, uh, yes or no. I don't think we need a maybe, right? <laughs> Unless you're very confused. Okay, so here we go. Let's launch the poll. Go ahead and answer. I want to see if my if my title is true. Top ten or top library tools you've never heard of. Oh, one person has heard of it. Okay, I'm sorry, that person. I, I tell a lie. Wow. Give you a few more seconds. I'm not sure. Can you can you see the results of the poll? Or can only I see them? Joey, you can see them? Joey's saying yes. Okay. No, you can't. You can't see them. Okay. Well, in that case, I think I must need to end the poll. So I'm going to end the poll in five seconds, and then I guess the results should be viewable by everyone. If they're not viewable, I'll tell you what they are. All right. The poll is ended. Oh, yes, there's a button here. I can share the results. So you can see, hopefully you can see, that yes, my instinct was right. 96% of you have never <laughs> used Press Reader before. So excellent. apologies to the two of you who've already used Press Reader, uh, but it's a, a little bit of revision then. So I'm going to close that, stop sharing. It's really nice. So similar to browsing, you do need to create an account and I'll, I'll go through the steps of this before. And very similar to browsing too, there is a web version that I kind of have to use to show you because we're on Zoom, but I would highly, highly recommend downloading the app version uh, because that's a little bit, it's kind of more designed for uh, the iPad and the iOS and the Android apps. Uh, but you, do, you can create the account uh, in the desktop and that allows you to, you know, similar to browsing, really save your favorite publications, but it's also really useful or important to have your account so that you can enable the off-campus access without going through the library every time. Off-campus access is a little tricky for press readers, so I'm, I will go through it step by step. Um, and they, but again, if you have technical trouble getting it to work, you can always contact me. So in terms of access, now to be honest, press reader was kind of designed for the on-campus access. So the idea is that if you're on campus, you're in the library. Uh, you're logged in with your account, 
as long as you log in in the library or on campus, you get seven days unlimited access to the platform, uh, no matter where you are. And to renew your access, you just have to log in again when you're on campus. But I hasten to add, please do not come to campus now just to log into Reader. That's a bad idea. Uh, we can sort of simulate this uh, by using this URL. Now, don't worry, you don't have to remember this URL. It is available on the library website, but again, it's hidden. So let me go through very uh, quickly, step by step, how to get access to this URL. So you go to databases. Uh, you can either type in press reader in that search box, or you can simply navigate to P, the press reader, and find it in uh, the list. And there is press reader. So I think you can see it in the address bar. Uh, so this is the special, what we call proxied link. So this kind of simulates on campus access. So when you click on this link, I'm on campus, so it goes directly to Press Reader. But if you were uh, off campus, you would have to log in with your SSO ID. And once you log in with your SSO ID, you can see it can now tell, oh, you are accessing from Hong Kong Baptist University. So you have full access to things. I am also logged in with my Press Reader account. If you're not logged in, uh, just create an account. That let me sign out and I can walk you through creation of an account. So again, this is a separate account, just like Browsing. You cannot log in with your SSO ID, I'm afraid. So for a new user, you'd sign up here. But again, it's, it's uh, free. Oh gosh, I've got so many. Oh, I think these are all the wrong accounts. So I probably shouldn't have signed out. Hang on, I need to look up my credentials again, because you know, I'm very conscious of security. I have a different password for every single thing. That's not the right one. There we go. My passwords are all very strong too. Okay, so I've logged back in. And this is Press Reader. So I've saved a bunch of my favorite publications. I love video games. So one of my <laughs> saved publications is PC Gamer, the UK uh, edition. Uh, it takes a little while to load sometimes because these are very high quality reproductions of the actual print magazine. So you can see here, this is really an exact reproduction. So not just the text, it is the uh, full version. But you can also see, hopefully you can see it as I hover my cursor over uh, the articles, they have enhanced it. So if I click on a particular article, it will take me directly to that article. So here's, I think, is um, um, there. Hang on, where is it gone? There it is. Their review of uh, Doom Eternal. Has anyone played Doom Eternal? I haven't. I just finished the first first Doom Doom 2016. Uh, but you can see here, this now is the text version. Uh, the the images from the magazine they again they're pretty high quality so they do take a, a little bit of time to load in uh, but you can sort of switch between the text version so right now I'm in the text view of the article and that's good if you want to uh, kind of read the text uh, because if you let me just switch back to the page view especially on the desktop it is a little bit harder because with the page view you have it's you have to zoom in like this. And, you know, it's doable, but it's a little bit harder to kind of move around the text. With, I can tell you with the iPad version, it's much easier to read uh, kind of the page view because you can pinch the zoom and all of those normal things that you can do uh, reading um, a magazine on an iPad. So there are literally thousands and thousands of publications. There are some Hong Kong uh, publications as well. I haven't checked recently. Well, there's uh, some Bo, Hong Kong Economic Journal. Uh, but yeah, have a, have a look and see if there are any magazines here of interest to you. you. You can tell more more leisure magazines. But you know, we need to we need to relax now and then too. We can't be reading journal articles and books and book chapters our our whole lives and crafts and hobbies. Uh, design design magazines might be useful. For any any visual arts students out there. Uh, those will be useful as well. You can look at, uh, you can narrow by language types, by countries. 
uh, etc. So there's a lot there to explore. But we're coming to the end of our time very rapidly. So I want to start wrapping up there. Any questions about press reader? Any questions, Joey? I feel like it's just me and Joey. No. <laughs> no questions from Chun Him. Nope. <laughs> Any, are, are you inspired to use, which, let me do a quick poll then, since we do have a little bit of time. Um, where's my polling tool? Uh, edit my poll. Let's see if I do a new question. While you're thinking of questions to ask, because we do have about 10 minutes to go. Uh, let's see. Which was your tool, let's say. Go with browsing and format, last but not least, press reader, fave tool. Very scientific poll I'm conducting here. Will that actually work? There it is. Launch poll. All right. Get your answers in. Polling is good because I can tell people are here, even if I can't see you. I, I know you're listening. Oh, we do have an actual question. Thank you, Xiao Chuan. Uh, Xiao Qian, sorry. May I ask whether we have access to the New York Times, Washington Post, et cetera, and Press Reader? Um, let me be honest. The big names, they tend to have their own subscription. So they tend not to uh, have uh, delegate their access, let's say, to Press Reader. I can tell you, though, for uh, the New York Times, New York Times is not in Press Reader, but we do have a separate subscription to the New York Times. So if you do want access to the New York Times, you can access it via the separate subscription we have to it. So uh, it's the same list, the same A to Z list of databases, and you can go to New York Times, first time activation, and you can sign up for a New York Times account there. Uh, and that's, that's a really nice subscription, actually. I read the New York Times every day. They have some really good alert services too. Uh, so create your account there. Uh, if you need any help with that, let me know. Um, Washington, now for other titles, if you're interested in other titles, I think Washington Post, maybe they have it. You can just search for uh, the title. Yes, they do have the Washington Post in, oops, I've had an E by mistake. Uh, so for the Washington Post, yes, that one is available in Press Reader. So if you're wondering about particular titles, uh, just do a search, uh, publication search in Press Reader, and you can find out whether or not they have it. Hopefully that answers your question, Xiao Chen. Thank you very much for the question. Another question. Is press reader eligible only for HKBU staff and students? Uh, yes, I'm afraid so. So of course we'd love to extend the access to other eligible users like our graduates and also you know, visiting scholars like visitors from other university libraries. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the license agreement that we have with press reader, they say, HKBU staff and students only. So sorry about that. But if you're in the library, uh, if, you, if you're an other eligible user and you can come into the library, you can get that, uh, you can activate the access. So if you come to the library uh, and log in, you will have access for seven days, even if you're no longer at the library. Uh, but the, the problem is you do have to come to the library every seven days, uh, but it will work even if you're off campus. But you, that link that I showed you will not work uh, in terms of you know, activating the off campus access. So this, what I'm talking about here is this link that I showed you before, this press reader link uh, will not work for other eligible users. But if you're on campus, you can just uh, activate the hotspot. And if you, have tr if you need help with that, let us know. Two questions, I'm so happy. Let's look at the results of the poll. 
And it's pretty ooh, interesting. I think I've done a really good job in terms of, uh, if I do say so myself, pat myself on the back, in terms of picking the tools because it's kind of an even split. So 34% said browsing, 37% said libkey nomad, and 31% said press reader. Oh, you're welcome, uh, WCH. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce your name, but thank you for the question. So good, I'm glad that uh, there were different parts that were interesting to, to different people. That's fantastic. The lat, we are almost out of time. Uh, we've only got five minutes left. And the last thing I need to do is ask you to fill out the feedback survey. So I'm going to, this is what the feedback survey looks like. Hang on, I need to copy the link and I will post it in the chat. Where's the chat gone? There it is. Uh, although we've, we've made it a friendly URL, so it's not too hard to um, decipher. It's bit.ly forward slash HKBU event. Uh, there have been security changes to Zoom, so you can no longer directly click on a link that's been posted in the chat. So you will have to copy and paste that into your browser. I think that's just to stop people executing malicious code and stuff like that. Uh, in the online feedback form, uh, just put the session code. So the session code for this session is 019. So just, just do that. That's fine. And just a, a few very easy questions. And if you have other comments, please do share them there too. So I'll give you two or three minutes uh, to do that. Uh, I'll hang around though, in, in case you have any questions. If you do have, wow, Yifeng is already finished. Don't, don't log off, Yifeng, because uh, we will count this time towards the 80%. I, I know you have other things to do, but we're, we're still within our time allowance. Oh, sorry, Joe, I missed your question. Uh, I, I feel bad because, you know, Joe's the only one who's trying on the camera. Will, will we talk about Mendeley? No, I'm afraid not uh, because Mendeley is a kind of a big thing and it takes a long time uh, to talk about. Um, I would say, do we have a Mendeley event this? I think usually we have a Mendeley learning event, but we didn't do one this semester because it's kind of hard to do one via Zoom because there's a lot of hands-on stuff that I like to do. Uh, what I will refer you to though, Joey, is the guide to Mendeley that we have on the website. So under services and under Mendeley, uh, we have, in fact, we updated this recently. Uh, so in terms of using Mendeley to save references and to generate citations, which is super useful this time of year as well when you're working on your final assignments. So we have lots of help videos here that have been recently updated. And if you do have any questions about using Mendeley, I'm the Mendeley person. Gosh, we even have my photo there, my goodness. So I'm, I'm the person to ask about Mendeley if you have any uh, questions or problems uh, using it. And we do have the link there to sign up for an account. Since you do mention it, Joy, I will say to everyone here that similar to the other products we've looked at here, when you log into Mendeley, it's not your HKBU SSO ID. I'm just going to log out of here. You do need to set up a separate account. That's probably the most common technical problem we get asked about with Mendeley is that people try to sign in and uh, they can't because they're trying to sign in with their SSO ID. You do need to create an account, a separate account for Mendeley. Uh, and it's pretty easy to do. Uh, and it's remembered mine here. So yeah, just sign up. All right. Ooh, two new messages. Yay. About Mendeley. I cannot open Mendeley these days. The website that they're experiencing an internal server problem. That's terrible. Um, I've not encountered any problems with Mendeley. I'm able to log in as normal. Uh, Shuyi, can I ask, are you using a, a VPN or anything weird to, not weird, but are you, in, are you using any VPN software that, that sometimes causes problems? You're in Hong Kong, yeah, so you don't need a VPN. Um, I can only suggest try using a different browser, using a different computer, maybe, because uh, I've not been having any problems, so it might be related to your setup. Let me know if you still haven't solved the problem, if that doesn't work, like send me an email directly and we can put you in touch, your classmates as well. My goodness. How many, well, 
con I don't want to bore everyone. Contact me and, and we'll try and figure it out. Because what I can do is uh, connect you with the uh, Mendeley support department because I am not aware of any problems with Mendeley at the moment. All right, I think that's been enough time for everyone to fill in the survey. Oh, thanks, Mandy. You're very kind. Uh, I'm glad you thought it was a good workshop. Thanks everyone for your attention. We are finishing right on time. I love that. I always love to finish uh, on time. That is it. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, for the CCL credit status, uh, it'll take us probably three or four days to get all of the uh, attendance compiled because you know, with Zoom, we have to go in and grab it and send it to the SLES. So don't panic if it doesn't immediately show up on your record. Uh, but I will say, if it doesn't show up by kind of this time next week, uh, let us know and we will follow up. All right, that's it. You're welcome, everyone. See you and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye.